Our application so far consists of several views and a number of components. We can switch between them and admire the default look of components forever, but there is very little we can do with our system just yet. We need to store the data somewhere, and we need a model for that data as well. Database connectivity is something we will cover in this section. Let's get started then. Before we can connect to the database, we need to model the data we would like to store in our application. Then, we need to be able to access that model with Fadit, meaning that we have to arrange the UI components, views and the like. Finally, we need to connect the database to store the data. The model of data we need to store in our application is very simple. We need to be able to store recipes, users and comments. Let's start with the user. Almost every web application contains an entity named user. Fadit developed application are no exception. Our user should contain the following information, email address, password, display name. The recipe is the central concept of our software. We need to store, apart from obvious things like name of the recipe and its author, also the ingredients list and the recipe itself. It would be nice if we also store the date when the recipe was added. Finally, a list of tags would be also useful to allow other users searching for the recipe based on the tag. Finally. Comments. Since only the logged in users are allowed to comment, we will naturally store a user and also the date of adding the comment and the comment itself. We will also give the users an option to rate recipes. Let's store the rating with the comment as well. OK, our model is ready. We will implement it in a moment. Once we do, how do we access it with Vadin? Vadin data model is an additional layer of abstraction between the UI components and the data source. It consists of three parts, which are declared in the framework as interfaces. What it means is that it is possible to switch one data source with another without worrying much about what provides that data. At the most general level, we have containers. They contain items, which group properties. A property is just a type value pair. In most cases, the value can be changed, and doing so will trigger property value change event. An item is a collection of properties, where each property is uniquely identified with a property ID. Finally, a container associates items and corresponding item ID. Moreover, all items in the container contain the same property types and property IDs. Whenever an item is added to or removed from a container, item set changed event is broadcasted. Some container implementations allow also adding or removing properties. In such case, property set change event is broadcasted. The easiest way to understand one data model is to apply it to relational databases. In the most general form, a container is a table, an item is a row, and a property is a column value of that row. That's about it. Let's set up a database for our application. We will do that in the next video.